In this video, we're going to work with Vagrant. Vagrant is a great tool to set up your dev environment with one command and it house all of your dependencies and also have it run everything just right. It is a standalone application that you can download and install from vagrantup.com. You also need to have VirtualBox installed as well because that's the virtual environment that everything runs in, but it runs it in a very seamless way. With using Vagrant, you can run your environment inside of a virtual box and do your development on your local machine without SSHing into your virtual box all the time and doing your editing inside of that SSH session. That way it feels like doing development locally how you normally tend to do it and all you have to really do is hit a URL in your browser and voila, you see everything just right. To get started with Vagrant, we need three key things in a folder. We need a Vagrant file, which houses all the VirtualBox specific configuration elements. You need your Django project, and in this case it's going to be demo. And you need your provisioning scripts. In this case, that folder is salt because we're going to use salt as our provisioner. And also to note that this folder that we're in currently right now is actually going to be shared with the VirtualBox environment, and it's going to be mounted in the slash Vagrant folder. So when you SSH into the box to do specific things, you just need to CD into slash vagrant. What this also allows you to do is to edit your project, in this case demo, locally and then immediately be reflected in the vagrant box. So with that all said and done, let's actually go ahead and look at our vagrant file so we can get started with understanding our configuration. The first thing that we have our configure block and the first thing in there says we're going to use the Ubuntu Trusty 64 uh, Vagrant or VirtualBox VM. This will automatically download from a VirtualBox's website or you can go to virtualbox.es and look for more there. But it will automatically download when you do a Vagrant up um, if it can't find it locally. If it's already downloaded in the past it just uses that and goes from there. The next thing that we're doing is we're setting the VirtualBox's IP address to 192.168.1.2 so that we can access it in our browser from that address. Next we're syncing the folder salt with the slash serve folder on our vagrant box since slash serve slash salt is the default location for salt scripts to live. Next we're configuring our provisioner of our salt provisioner. In this case, we're saying the minion config file is going to be used that's in salt slash minion. In this case, in our local folder in, at salt slash minion, we have a configuration file that we'll discuss here in a second. Next, we're going to run the high state, and then we're going to say, hey, we don't want to set it up with a master. Finally, the bottom block is to just set some extra memory and two CPUs. You don't necessarily need to do this, but since I have the resources, I like to do it myself. Now with that out of the way, we're actually ready to go ahead and take a look at our salt scripts. But before that, let's go ahead and make a quick note about our minion file. In the salt slash minion file, we have two pieces of information. We have a file underscore client local, and we have our log file. File underscore client local says, hey, for this minion, we're going to run it from our local salt states that are on this box. It's actually the same thing as if you did a salt call hyphen hyphen local as a command and then did state dot high state, it runs your local salt states. And then log file is obviously where all the output is actually put to. Sometimes when you're doing a lot of work with salt, it's good to have a log file to dump everything out to. So I generally go ahead and set it whether I use it or not. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our salt states. These are actually pulled directly from our salt videos, so they're the exact same in every case except for if we look at our top.sls file, we'll see we have base. Base is different. I make sure that Build Essentials and GCC is installed with it. The one that's not the same as before is the python.sls, which actually takes a little bit of discussion. We're going to make sure that we have Python, Python dev, and Python pip installed so we can do pip installs. However, we're not going to use a virtual environment because the entire virtual box that we're in is our virtual environment. So we're doing a pip install of Django, but we're setting our requirements file to the requirements file inside of our project. What this is going to do is it's going to make sure that everything in that requirements file is installed along with Django. 
So whatever you have in there, this will automatically install it so that whenever you do your provisioning, it all sets everything up just right. And with that, that's really it with, with salt. Everything again is the same from the previous salt videos. So if you'll watch those, you'll have an idea of how to do that. So with our next step, we're going to actually do our Vagrant Up and it's going to spit out a whole bunch of stuff at you telling you the process and the place that it's at for setting everything up. It's actually going to pause at setting up and bootstrapping salt and then again it'll pause at doing the high state. We're just going to go ahead and jump to the end so that we can show the rest. Now that everything is installed and provisioned we can SSH into our box by just doing a vagrant SSH and this gives us access to it. If we ls we just see what we have normal home directory files and folders and then if we'll do our if config we'll see that ethernet 1 is set up with our 192.168.1.2 ip address that we set in our configuration file next if we cd into our vagrant folder we'll see that we have demo salt and vagrant file just like we had on our computer then finally going into our demo folder we can see we have our project and if we'll actually run the server and use port 8000 we can actually view it in our browser and then just to drive home that we can do development locally well, let's go ahead and run it as a background process and do a PS to verify it's running and there it is and then if we'll exit out of our vagrant machine if we'll exit out of our SSH session and we'll edit our URLs to have a home URL and then we'll create a views file and just return from our home view an HTTP response with some plain text. And then just jump over to our browser, refresh, and there we have, we have the standard text. Finally, we're going, we can suspend this box if we aren't gonna use it anymore for the rest of the day. So that way, next time we do a vagrant up, it just instantly starts and is in the same position it was before. However, if we're never going to use it again or we completely screw up the machine, we can just do a vagrant destroy and it tears everything down and we need to do a fresh vagrant up all the way starting from scratch. So with that, you've learned a little bit of the basics of using vagrant. It's fairly simple to set up. The biggest blocker for you setting one yourself up is just getting all of your salt scripts to work the way that you want them to do. It's fairly simple if you understand salt, which the previous videos explained to you. But, you know, trying to get everything to execute in the right order and like what that order is, you know, and all that stuff, it, it can take a little bit of time. But hey, once it works, it works and you can pass this around to other developers and build it out and really get it where your project is easy to set up for new developers. So with that, definitely check out Vagrant for doing your development. I know I've switched many of my projects over to using Vagrant because it just makes life a whole lot easier. With that, have a good day and have a happy time developing.